Do you struggle with life's challenges, react with the sense of frustration, blame, or a sense of failure? If so, you are going to love how we turn the poison of our problems into our greatest medicine in today's Hatha Yoga class. Hi, I'm Melissa from Yoga with Melissa. This is real yoga for real people, so you can move better, feel better, and connect with your true nature. In a culture that wants us to do more, be more, and consume more, this is deeply transformational hatha yoga so that we can bring self-awareness and self-acceptance to ourselves, our relationships, and the earth that we inhabit. I put out a new full-length yoga class every single Friday, so if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single yoga class. And while you're at it, be sure to like the video and let me know what you liked about it in the comments. If you are feeling stressed out and anxious today, then I encourage you to press that mute button and follow along visually until the spoken teachings become less overwhelming. Today's class is all about how the poison of our problems be how can become our greatest medicine. And I'm going to just touch on the surface of these teachings today and make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end so that I can tell you how you can find out more about this and how you can go deeper with these teachings. I have a testimonial for you today from Jane in our membership community about Yoga with Melissa 377, Steady and Calm Yoga. She says, I felt a deep connection with the ground in this practice and throughout. I felt a calmness and peace settle within me. Being friendly and patient with myself, I could gently turn my attention back to my breath and rootedness in the moment. So thank you, Jane, and thanks to all of you who take the time to leave your comments on YouTube, on iTunes, on Facebook, on Instagram, on my website, and as always, the most in-depth conversations happen in our membership community. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Thanks to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes today, I am wearing uh, navy blue capri leggings and a green vine bamboo uh, racer back tank. And thanks to Dusky Leaf for my props today. Today I'm going to use two of the cork blocks and also a bolster. And I think that is it. Let's begin with our peace mantra. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavahe Tejasvina Vadita Mastu Mavidvishavahe Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So that mantra means protect us together, student and teacher. May our studies nourish us together. May our learning be luminous and purposeful. May we live in harmony. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Our practice today is going to begin in reclined bound angle pose. So you're going to set your bolster up lengthwise on your mat and then you're going to take your two blocks and you're going to use them to support you underneath your knees. So bring the soles of your feet together, open your knees and then wherever your knees land, you're going to put the blocks in underneath them so that they're not hanging in midair. And then you're gonna lie back over your bolster and adjust your bolster so that it's comfortable on your back. And bring your arms out to the side so that you're in a supported back bend here and also a hip opener. Feel the support of the earth underneath you.
And let your attention settle on your breath in your belly. And let your breath drop right down into your low belly, right down into your pelvis, breathing space right into your hip joints. So any stiffness in your hip joints, you're going to just breathe space into them right now with your breath. Our difficulties can be the source of our deepest wisdom, patience, balance, and compassion. But it doesn't always feel that way. My teacher, Neil McKinley, his teacher is Reggie Ray, and his teacher was Chogyam Rinpoche. And there, he has this great saying that I found today that I just found so funny and so true, which is that spiritual progress from the ego's point of view feels like one insult after another. And that's what our challenges and our difficulties can feel like, just like one insult coming like a wave, one wave after another on a beach. <laughs> um, so I thought that was very true. You can kind of feel like that. So you can reflect honestly right now on the challenges in your life and how they feel for you, you know, how you react to them. You know, if you feel like they are a problem, if you feel like they're a personal assault, if you feel like there's something wrong with you when you have problems, you know, just an honest assessment of what it feels like when you're dealing with life's difficulties. And there's no right or wrong or better, best answer. We're just reflecting honestly on, on what it feels like for us in our lives. And then begin to form an intention of what it is you'd like to receive from your yoga class today. What is it you're trying to create, sustain, or let go of in your life? And how can your yoga practice help you to do that? And from here, you're going to lift up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back to your spine. You can even use your hands to draw your knees together. And you're going to lengthen your legs out and roll to your side and place the bolster off to the side, place the blocks off to the side. Lie back down onto the ground. Take your feet, the width of your mat, your arms out to the side and sway your knees from side to side. So just do some windshield wipers to warm up those hip joints. And then come back to the center and slide your left leg straight long and open your right knee out to the side. 
And if it doesn't open all the way out to the side so that the, your knee is resting on the ground so that you're, you've got the full support of the floor, then just place a cushion underneath it or the block underneath it. You're going to inhale, take your arms overhead, and then you're going to exhale and side bend towards your bent knee. And then come back to the center. Draw your right knee into the center. Slide your right leg out. Slide your left leg in. Open your left knee out to the side. And again, if your left leg isn't fully supported by the floor, then you're going to put a cushion underneath it or one of the blocks. And then from here, you're going to take your arms overhead again in side bend over towards the left side. And then you're going to come back center. And feel the difference in your hips, your pelvis area, your side body. And then bend your knees. And place your feet flat on the floor. Cross your left ankle over the top of your right thigh. Draw your right thigh in towards your chest. Keep your right knee fully bent and we'll just release your left hip a little bit here. Release that side down. And cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh. Open your right knee out to the side. Draw your left leg in. Hold on behind your left hamstring. Breathing here, feeling the effect in the outside of your right thigh and into your right glute.
and then release this leg down and you're going to come on over and we're gonna start to come into some side plank variations so roll to your side and come on up and you might want to roll up your mat a little bit so underneath your right elbow you can double up your mat so you've got a little bit of extra padding I'm going to give you a few options here. We're going to try and do some tree pose variations here, but let me give you some options so that uh, we can build and layer on the difficulty of this pose. So the first option is going to be to bend your knees back and lift up and lift your arm up. Okay, so without any tree pose variations. The second option is going to be to increase the difficulty by lengthening your legs out. So as soon as you lengthen the lever, the challenge becomes more difficult. You're lifting more weight. So you're going to lift off the ground and you're going to reach up and you might want to stay here. Okay. Or you can take your top leg and bend it so that you're doing a tree pose variation and lift and come up here. Okay, and then you're going to slowly lower down. So as you're going over to the other side, normally when challenges and mistakes and difficulties arise in our life, we feel blame or we blame other people. We feel frustrated or we feel a sense of failure. I know I can relate to all three of those things, or maybe I, I can do all three of those things at once, actually, simultaneously. And then at the same time, we also try to get rid of our feelings or get over it and try to get back to life as business as usual, as my teacher Neil says, as soon as possible and get back into our regular pleasant experience. Um, and that's, that's normally how we experience difficulty. So let's do this on the other side. So now you're on your right side. You're gonna, so the same options apply. You can have your legs out long bend your knees and you can lift up or you can do legs long and lift or you can do the tree pose variation and I find it easier to get your top leg in the tree pose variation before you come up so you're going to breathe in and you're going to breathe out and lift Okay, and then we're going to release that and we're going to do another plank pose. <laughs> I thought, you know, it kind of was interesting when I created this class, there's a lot of plank pose and, you know, it's kind of interesting that there's these difficult core strength poses while we're um, focusing on difficulty. It kind of goes hand in hand, right? So a couple of op options for plank pose as well. You can do plank. Okay, so <laughs> let's see. You can do plank here. If you have wrist issues, this probably isn't going to be too great. So let me give you options. You can come down on your forearms and you can do a bent knee plank. Or you can come onto your toes here and do your plank here. We are going to do plank with the tree pose leg. So you could do it here, or you can come up and do plank on your, with your straight arms with the tree pose leg. Okay? So whatever version works best for you. Okay? I'm going to do straight arms with the tree pose leg. 
this all seemed like a good idea when I was planning the class. <laughs> okay, here we go. So take one leg back, the other leg back. Let's try left leg for tree pose to begin. So usually in our life, when difficulty arises, we project our frustrations onto the difficulties themselves, as if it's something outside of ourselves, the relationships, our living circumstances, our work, the world outside of us that is the problem. <laughs> okay, so let's take a break before we come to the other side. <sighs> Okay, come forward and take your legs back again. This time we'll do plank with the right leg in the tree pose. So we think that if we can change our circumstances, then we'll be happy. But it's not in changing our circumstances that we'll be happy, but in changing our relationship to our circumstances. Good job. Okay. We're going to do some downward facing dog with a tree pose leg, if you can believe it or not, because that was my theme running through this class. Um, if you would like, I'll, I give you the option to do tree pose with your uh, downward facing dog with the wall, okay? That would be a nice option, less weight bearing. So you're going to come into downward facing dog. And then whether you're doing it using the wall or the floor, which is the wall underneath you, then you're going to take your right leg up and behind. And let's just circle it a bit here first. And then you're going to bring it into tree pose. And then you're gonna come down and relax on the ground. So we all face difficulties in our lives, challenges and relationships, problems at work, pain, injury, illness. We lose the people and animal companions that we love the most. Sometimes it's our own depression, anxiety, fear, and emotional pain, and even addictions that we're dealing with all of these things we all experience. Sometimes it's just the pain of having to come back into downward facing dog with the tree pose leg on the other side. <laughs> so let's do that. Okay, so back to the downward facing dog. And then you're going to take your left leg up and behind, open up your left hip and we'll just Circle the left hip to warm up the hip joint first. Coming into the downward facing dog and then finding that tree pose leg.
Okay, and from here, we're going to make our way up to standing. Okay, what we're going to do is move between tree pose and warrior three. So you might want to be close to a wall or have a chair close by to help you with balance if balance is an issue for you. And you can just hold on to the chair or the wall for balance. You're going to stand on your right leg to begin. Draw your left leg up. It can either be on the inside of your calf or the on inside of your thigh. Bring your hands to your heart center. You're going to breathe in here. Breathe out. And then you're going to breathe in. Reach your hands overhead and reach your left leg behind you. Tip forward and come into warrior three. So today I'm going to share with you Jack Kornfield's story of a poison tree. When first discovering a poison tree, which is a metaphor for the difficulties of our lives, some people only see its danger. And then we're going to come back up to tree pose. And well, let's release this side down and do the other side. So you're going to stand on your left leg. Draw your right leg up either to the below your knee or above your knee. Take a breath in, a breath out. Breathe in, take your arms overhead. <laughs> okay, we'll, take, we'll try that one again. <laughs> Take your arms overhead and your right leg behind. So the people that only see its danger, their immediate response is to cut it down and get rid of it before anybody is hurt. And this is not any different than the normal response to aggression, compulsion, and greed and fear that arises within us when we are faced with anxiety, depression, loss, conflict, or sadness in ourselves and others. Our initial response is to get rid of the problem. Okay, let's come back up to tree pose. And then let tree pose fall out of your body. And then we're going to do another version of tree pose. So stand on your left leg, turn your right toes out. You can keep your toes on the ground, on the inside of your calf, or on the inside of your thigh. And then you're going to inhale, take your arms overhead, take your right arm down, and you're gonna side bend towards your bent leg. So perhaps your initial response to the poison tree isn't aversion, but compassion. Your response may not be to cut it down, but instead of judging it, you decide to build a fence around it so that others are not poisoned, and the tree may also still have a life. So this might be a judgment, a shift from judgment to compassion. And then you're going to release that down. And this time you're going to stand on your right leg, turn your left toes out. Your toes can stay on the ground, the inside of your calf, or the inside of your thigh. And take your arms up. This time your left arm comes down and you side bend over to the bent leg. And again, you can use a wall or a chair for balance.
and then release that down. And one more version of tree pose. This time you're going to stand on your left foot, turn your right toes out. Toes can stay on the ground, on the inside of your calf, or on the inside of your thigh. You can still use a chair or wall for balance. And this time you're gonna to turn towards your bent leg. Take your left hand to the outside of your bent right leg so that you're coming into a twist. And then come back to the center. And let's twist on the other side. So Jack Cornfield suggests that there is a third kind of response to the poisonous tree. And this person actually sees the poisonous tree exactly as what they were looking for and picks the fruit from the poisonous tree. They investigate the properties of the poisonous fruit. They mix it with other ingredients and they use the poison as medicine to heal the sick and transform the suffering of the world. So this person sees the value in the most difficult circumstances. Okay, and then you can go ahead and let this head of your body. And <laughs> I have two more versions of tree pose here, believe it or not. <laughs> Okay, so come back to the other leg. And we're gonna open to our difficulties here. So interlace your fingers behind you and lift and open your chest. And then release that down and now you're going to stand on your right leg again turn your left toes out choose where you're going to place your leg we're going to open on this side so um, this time i'm going to place my hands on my hips and lift and open my chest draw my elbows back this time And release the final version of tree pose. Here is a forward folding tree pose. I would recommend using your blocks for this. Depending on your body, if you forward fold easily, you might not need your blocks, but I definitely need my blocks for this. So I was putting my blocks in front of me like this. And so we were just switch legs. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes out in the wash, right? Hinge forward through your hips and you're going to fold forward. And then we'll come back up to standing and we'll do this last version of standing tree pose legs. So you're gonna roll your pelvis over your leg bones and coming into that standing forward fold here. Thank you. 
Okay, so you're going to find a way out of this pose and then you're going to come all the way down to sit on your mat. And you may still need your block, a block, for this. I would recommend sitting up on a folded blanket or, or a um, meditation cushion so it's easier to roll your pelvis forward here. You're going to bend your right leg in and open your right leg out to the side. If there's space here between your knee and the floor, then you're just going to fill it with the block or the meditation cushion or a, a, a cushion from your couch, and you're going to fold forward over your extended left leg. This configuration of your leg should be feeling fairly simple by this point in the class, I would think. So as you're hanging out on this side, you can reflect on a question that Jack Cornfield asks. What spirit of freedom, compassion, or understanding is yet to be found in the midst of the difficulties of your life? And then you're going to come up and extend your right leg out long. Open your left knee out to the side. Lengthen up tall through your spine. Inhale here. Stay long through your spine and fold forward. And then a second question from Jack Cornfield on this side. With respectful attention, what can you willingly learn from the difficulty that is present in your life? And then you're going to come back up and rest back on your back for Shavasana. Take that bolster that you had close by before and place it underneath your knees. And then you're going to stay resting here in Shavasana to receive and integrate your practice. And I'm going to sit up and read you a poem. This poem is called Lost by David White. Stand still. The trees ahead and the bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here, and you must treat it as a powerful stranger, must ask permission to know it and be known. The forest breathes. Listen, it answers. I have made this place around you. 
If you leave it, you may come back again, saying here, No two trees are the same to raven. No two branches are the same to wren. If what a tree or bush does is lost on you, you are surely lost. Stand still. The forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. Okay, so you're going to gradually wiggle your fingers and your toes, bend your knees and roll to your right side, and slowly make your way up to seated for our mudra. We are going to sit with the mudra for a few minutes. You can sit kneeling on a block like me, or you can sit cross-legged, or you can sit in a chair. So this mudra, um, the best way to film it is if, if it's coming from this way. So do you want me to turn around? We could cut. You want? Okay. So the first thing you do is put your right ring finger between the web of your middle finger and your index finger. Then you put your left ring finger between the web of your middle finger and your index finger. Then you curl your middle fingers down and lock them in place. Bring your pinky fingers together and your index fingers together and your thumbs together. And then you have the Anahata Chakra Mudra. Okay, so you're going to hold this Anahata Chakra Mudra at the level of your heart. Close your eyes and let your shoulders be soft, let your belly be soft. Allow your inner gaze to rest on your heart center. And this mudra expands feelings of compassion, love, and also increases your healing abilities.
So we'll move from this mudra now to our closing mudra sequence, left palm up, right palm down, making space with breath and a sigh. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu Loka samasta sukino bhavantu Loka samasta sukino bhavantu May all beings be happy and free and may the thoughts, words and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. So, if you found some insight on how to turn the poison of your problems into medicine in your life, then please let me know by pressing that like button. And if you know somebody who would benefit from this class, um, then please feel free to share it with them as well. Let me know in the comments. Jack Hornfield asks, what spirit of freedom, compassion, or understanding is yet to be found in the difficulties of your life. Let me know um, how you are willingly learning from the difficulty that is present in your life right now. I want to thank you so much for your donations. It's been a while since we filmed, so uh, we have, I have several people to thank. Cornelia, Donna, Hillary, Sonia, Diane, Zanita, Donna, another Donna, Sharon F, Sean, Anne Marie, Hannah, Paige, Hannah with Hannah with no H, Hannah with an H. Um, and these are all one-time and monthly donations to Yoga with Melissa. And also I want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you who donated to my GoFundMe campaign. I put together a GoFundMe campaign to uh, help me to be able to go on a uh, training and retreat here on Salt Spring Island, a seven-day intensive with my meditation teacher, Neil McLeanley. And many of you donated to that, and uh, I am fully funded for that, so I will be going on that retreat and yes, thank you so much. And many of you who uh, donated, who made donations also, can make regular donations also made donations to that. So thanks to your support and generosity, I will be attending that. And also we exceeded the, um, the call for that. And so uh, with the excess of donations, I'm currently in an online intensive course with Neil right now. He's my teacher here. I take weekly classes with him here in Victoria. He teaches for Dharma Ocean um, in Colorado, and I'm in an online course with him right now. And it's part one of a Sutriana course with him. Part two of the course is in the fall. I've received enough uh, excess donation that I will be able to t cover my tuition for part two of the course in the autumn. So that is my plan of what I'm going to do with the over and above donations that I have received from your generosity. So thank you so, so much. I am humbled by your generosity, by your donations and your belief in me and my ongoing education. So I thank you very, very much. So if you still want to make a donation, you can. Just know that I will use the donations. If you feel if you feel guided to donate, you can still donate. I'll use the donations towards my ongoing uh, education for uh, my meditation training. That's, that's what I'm putting it towards, so you know. Okay, so thank you for your belief in me as I pursue these further studies. It, it really means a lot to me. Uh, I receive a lot, and, I, and a lot of you have mentioned that you've seen a big difference in my teaching over the time that I've been studying with Neil, so thank you for that. Now, at the beginning, I did tell you that I would let you know where you could go to receive the rest of these teachings because I feel like we we have just scratched the surface of this, really just with the metaphor of the poisonous tree, and it's such a great metaphor. Now, on Mondays in our live classes in our membership community, I'll be able to take those teachings much deeper, and also the benefit of that class is that you're on video with me, and we all get a chance to speak, and we can speak about our own experiences, and then... And uh, you get to ask questions and it's just a really fruitful time um, and also I'll, I'll go deeper with med a guided meditation with it as well uh, more time for reflection and it's just a way to take the te teachings just so much 
uh, further than we can here. So if you'd like to go further, if you're sort of left scratching your head about it, it is because we have really, I really can only touch on the teachings here, but when we meet, we can go so much further, we can take real examples from our life and do the deep dives there, and that's really where we do it. So that's on Mondays at 9.30 Pacific and 5.30 Pacific every Monday in our membership community. Give a teaching talk. We have a practice and loads of time for questions and discussion. And if you want to know more about that, uh, I'll put the direct link for members and also uh, the, a link for you to sign up if you're not already a member. So I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean. May you be as rooted as the trees in our old growth forests. And may you be as strong as our mountains. Om Shanti. Namaste. Our medicine, and I think we should probably do this one again. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's good. <laughs> we could say take two. Do you struggle with life's challenges? I struggle with my cameraman. <laughs> it went. <laughs> Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.